Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now I'm working on a few different videos, including my next top 10 most mysterious sites in Egypt videos. But today we're just going to document another ancient site in Egypt. I have documented many dozen sites in Egypt, and today we're going to go down just north of Abydos. But here is Abydos down on the bottom of the screen. So this is just up the shore some miles, not very far. This is Beit Khalif. The nearest town here what we're going to talk about is over on this little point you see the sand area here and i just can't help but think maybe in ancient times they had water surrounding this whole area here but we're going to go down and talk about a couple of mastabas the town here there is a large mastaba this is called k1 it was excavated in 1900 1901 by john garstang and this one to the north not quite as big but still, I notice they're both aligned in the same way here. But this one is called K2. There's plenty of interesting things found here. But I have a few questions with these. These are mud brick structures, but are these covering a much more ancient structure? And in my Edfu video, I went over that if you did not build your temple or your mastaba or whatever you were building on top of something very ancient, it wasn't considered sacred, so that was a must, building your mastaba or tomb or temple on top of an even ancient structure. But here is the large mastaba known as K1. And then just to the north of that, I showed you that on Google Earth. I believe this is what they call K2. And this goes down into a pit. The core of this structure is, just seems to be a pit. Now the research that went on here in 1900, let's just read. The English archaeologist John Garstang was a young man of 25 when he was appointed leader of excavations in the Beit Khalif area in 1900. With a crew of local workers, he dug in several places for two seasons and pub published the results in 1903. The vicinity around an interesting old structure upon a low desert plateau in the floodplain had been a forbidden area for local inhabitants for, for religious and superstitious reasons, probably since the end of the Roman times, it was thus, more or less, undisturbed for 1,600 years. Nobody, including scholars of the new science of Egyptology, knew what this box-shaped, partly ruined formation could be. Different suggestions told about a Roman fortress, a royal castle, or possibly an Egyptian temple of unknown age. From the looks, it did not resemble any known type of architectural design, but shortly after the start of the investigation, it became clear to the scholars this was a mastaba tomb of a gigantic proportions, and its age was soon to be revealed. In Garstang's books, describing the results of his work, the text is very short by modern standards, and it is not more than an article in length, but another aspect was he was well ahead of his colleagues at the time, the use of a camera for documentation. And I will leave a link to the Garston Museum and the photographs he took of the alabaster vases and the other offerings that seem to be left here. In Garstang's sketch, from the tomb's plan, the outer walls were two meters thick brickwork holding the inner filling of stones and sand. This is somewhat bewildering description because most of the building is solid except around the shafts where large stones were sunk down into the stairway to prevent grave robbers from entering. They did so anyhow, and Roman amphora vessels left among the debris told Garstang that he wasn't the first one to investigate the site. It says, notably, the entrance was sealed once again after this intrusion, and they're talking about the Roman times. Though some names were revealed through the finds, the owner's name is still not known to Egyptologists and is a hard nut to crack. But this is a cross section, a diagram, and that descending shaft looks like the one at Zayat al Aryan and the one at Abu Rawash, the Pyramid of Jedefri, it is called. But here is a diagram of what was found beneath this mastaba. Seems more than a few chambers here. And here is John Garstang from 1901 in front of the KV1 tomb. Now on this website, and there is not a lot written, but it talks about discoveries made here in 1900 and 1901. One of the seal impressions had the name of Djoser, the third dynasty pharaoh who supposedly built the Step Pyramid. So this just added to the Egyptologist confusion. 
of where these pharaohs were actually buried. But there was other names found here, and there is actually a name for these mastabas in the old language. It's P-R-D-J-T, Perjet in the old language, and that means House of Eternity. And based on another inscription in K2, the one just to the north here, there was a seal with the name of Saneket, and that was an Egyptian king of the Third Dynasty. And so they just kind of assumed that these were Third Dynasty Mastabas. The largest tomb, K1, rises 8 meters above the desert and covers an area of 3,800 square meters. A 2 meter thick outer wall holds a filling with sand and stone and huge brickwork are made around pits and corners. The burial shaft lies 25 meters below the surface at the bottom of a stairway which was blocked with six massive stones. The ceiling above the stairway was constructed of descending barrel vaults supported by mud brick arches and are thought to be the oldest known vaults in Egypt. Nearly 800 cylindrical alabaster vases were removed from the stairway, 800 vases, including some with the mud cap seals with the name of Nederket, and that is Djoser. The burial chamber comprised 18 chambers leading out from a central passage. Unfortunately, the burial has been disturbed by plunderers who dug a small hole underneath the mastaba, and the bones were scattered and offering vessels were strewn about in confusion. The second largest tomb, K2, was of similar design to K1, contained human remains and a small fragment inscribed with the name Heneket or Seneket. And they guess that the skull there on the right is the skull of Seneket, and that is just purely a guess, no way to know. But originally in the early 1900s, John Garstang thought he discovered some tombs of some third dynasty pharaohs, but that kind of got squashed, and they just kind of gloss this over by saying, well, these are just some private tombs of some maybe related third dynasty family members, but they don't give an answer. To when this place was built and who it was for so we really don't know well it seems this place was always sacred through 3,000 years of dynastic Egyptian history all the way through the Roman period and then they kind of attached this place to some seals and there was many of them I mean 800 vases were left here people were always leaving offerings here but it seems they took the most important seals that they could find and then they tried to attach that name to who this place was built for. And I think that may have been totally incorrect. But once again, they don't know who this place is for, or when it was built, or if this is something on top of a much more ancient structure that seemed to be carved right into the ground. And personally, I think this could have originally been like one of those unfinished pyramids, just a shaft cut in the ground. And then the later Egyptians built a mud brick structure over an original structure. And how many structures did I go over in that series where they just say the core of these structures are just pits? That seems to be a very ancient place. And it seemed to be always important to the dynastic Egyptians starting in the Old Kingdom. So when was this place originally built? Those are just questions I ask. But but I thought I would document another site in Egypt. There are literally hundreds of them. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.